Hi everyone, it's June 13, 2018. I'm going to start this video with Grindall 61's video that he posted. He interviewing a plumber out in California. The illegal immigrants in California have destroyed his business. He is a plumber. And, you know, this video is going to be focusing on the economy and the condition of the American people. A majority are really struggling. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I get comments from Trump supporters who claim, Carol, Trump is bringing back jobs. Americans are working again. God, you're so negative. You know, look, let me just bring you to this article, Confirmation Bias and the Power of Disconfirming Evidence. Many people have this confirmation bias. In fact, all of us do. If you are unaware of your own thoughts, you haven't really thought about how your brain works, you have never reevaluated those beliefs that you have, then you will be unaware of your brain working in ways that really does not allow truth in. It allows information in that confirms those beliefs that you have, knocking out information and it doesn't matter if it is truthful information. You will knock it out so that you can continue to feel comfortable and all of the beliefs that you have continue to be confirmed. That is not a quote-unquote truther. So many people, oh, I'm a truther. Well, if you are a truther, that means that you embrace all truth, the truth about your own self, and that means that you have put yourself on the road to self-discovery, self-knowledge, self-awareness, as well as awareness and knowledge and discovery about the truth of what we are all facing collectively. And if you have not done any thinking about your own thinking and how your brain does come up with an awful lot of lies that you think are the truth, but those lies allow your brain to conjure up these presumptions about other people, presumptions about uh, all of what we are facing, presumptions about the economy, if you are still somebody who puts who puts personality above principle and still somebody who so wants somebody else to fix the problem so that you don't have to do anything and you don't have to change, you can still go on living your life exactly how you've always lived it then you will be someone who has that confirmation bias going in your mind. Confirmation bias. It is our tendency to cherry pick information that confirms our existing beliefs or ideas. Confirmation bias explains why two people with opposing views on a topic can see the same evidence and come away feeling validated by it. This cognitive bias is most pronounced in the case of ingrained ideological or emotionally charged views. So, if you are still somebody who is a Trump supporter, then you will look for information that then you can throw out in support of Trump doing a fabulous job. The economy. It really is very interesting to have been on YouTube during the Obama years 
and here all of those who were I guess conservative or Republican and they agreeing with me in terms of those monthly the monthly uh, data on how fabulous the economy is doing and administrations creating jobs agreeing that the numbers were so manipulated to make the Obama administration and Obama look good but now now that they got Trump a Republican whatever Trump is he was Democrat Republican whatever um, now those numbers I guess what they hear from mainstream media is enough for them to throw it out underneath videos claiming that Trump is making America great again and nothing could be further from the truth but when you have this confirmation bias and you're somebody who really needs to believe that things are improving you will knock out the truth you're not a quote-unquote truther I can't stand that term but you're not about the truth you're about making yourself comfortable so this confirmation bias we really need self-awareness that is a quality that every individual needs if they are about the truth they need their own awareness of themselves and how they think so that they can catch their confirmation biases and they can catch their presumptions that they make and then throw out as fact when it's just something that they have manufactured in their own in their own mind and they call it a fact and then I mean, all of this causes an awful lot of problems but when you have a belief alright you have a belief that Trump is making America great again because he's bringing back jobs to America and Americans more Americans are working and you use that statistic unemployment Carol it's 3.8 percent my god in one year Trump has just miraculously put an awful lot of Americans back to work alright so you use that to support your belief that Trump is doing what he said he would do do you just stop there or do you look further into the unemployment figures do you look further into the economy to check out the belief that you have because if you don't do that then you're operating with this confirmation bias and you are not about the truth so while it is uh, probably within every individual oh don't we so want to cherry pick the information so that we can so that we can hold on to beliefs no matter how wrong they are we can just hold on to them because it's more comfortable that way well when we do that we we're not on the road of truth confirmation bias tendency to cherry pick information that confirms our existing beliefs or ideas confirmation bias explains why two people with opposing views on a topic can see the same evidence come away feeling validated by it I read that again sorry failing to interpret information in an unbiased way can lead to serious misjudgments can lead you in the direction of the lie instead of the truth by understanding this we can learn to identify it in ourselves and others we can be cautious of data 
that seems to immediately support our views when we feel as if others cannot see sense, a grasp of how confirmation bias works, can enable us to understand why. So, this comes from a book called The Web of Belief. The desire to be right and the desire to have been right are two different desires. And the sooner we separate them, the better off we are. The desire to be right is the thirst for truth. On all counts, both practical and theoretical, there is nothing but good to be said for it. The desire to have been right, on the other hand, is the pride that goeth before a fall. It stands in the way of our seeing we were wrong and thus blocks the progress of our knowledge. So, when the human being is what the human being is best at doing, is interpreting all new information so that their prior conclusions remain intact. God. Warren Buffett. Um, like many mental models, confirmation bias was first identified by the ancient Greeks. For it is a habit of humanity to entrust to careless hope what they long for and to use sovereign reasons to thrust aside what they do not fancy. Well, this is an interesting article. I will link below to it. Um, and confirmation bias is somewhat linked to our memories. Yes, that is true. We have a penchant for recalling evidence that backs up our beliefs. The most difficult subjects can be explained to the most slow-witted man if he has not formed any idea of them already. But the simplest thing cannot be made clear to the most intelligent man if he is firmly persuaded that he knows already, without a shadow of a doubt, what is laid before him. And doesn't that happen often? So, it happens, it happens all the time. You have people who believe that if you are against illegal immigration, you're a racist. You're a racist. Now, American, uh, the, they comprise um, virtually the world's people. That, that's the United States. So when you talk about illegal immigration, we're talking about the illegality that is being committed by those who just cross the border and then have their lives sustained by U.S. legal citizens have their lives sustained by those who are legal. There's an awful lot of legal immigrants here in this country. You just have to go to YouTube. Mexicans, furious. They legal immigrants and they're furious that we now just have this open border and Mexicans are crossing over the border. It's not just Mexicans, it's Guatemalans and, and um, and people from Honduras, El Salvador, but you're a racist. So they will go to articles that prove their point instead of looking at the whole, the whole picture. Americans are being destroyed by illegal immigrants like this plumber here talks about how his business died because of the illegal immigrants who unbelievably in California have been granted licenses and apparently professional licenses 
again, I would have to listen again. Well, I'd have to listen again to this video, um, but my computer crashed <laughs> and they're now working and taking the jobs of Americans. People who don't want to believe that will go find the information that confirms their belief that illegal immigrants are helping the economy. And there's an awful lot of mainstream media articles that support that belief. But they won't look any further. That's the problem with confirmation bias. Just want to point out uh, the fiscal burden of illegal immigration on the United States. State by state costs of illegal immigration. These are just the state costs excluding federal costs. California, 23 billion. And how many Californians are homeless? How many Californians can't afford to live in California and are moving? How many Californians, legal residents of that state, are desperate for help because of the high housing costs and the destruction of uh, the economy, leaving service sector jobs. How many are living in their teachers? You have got teachers, you've got, you have associate professors who are living in their cars. This, and 23 billion goes to illegal immigrants. Stunning. South Carolina, 629.7 million. Georgia, 2.5 billion. Florida, 6.3 billion. Texas, 11 billion. It's your money we're talking about. Wherever you live, it is your money. Kansas, 503.6 million goes to illegal immigrants. Oklahoma, 623.9 million. Arizona, 2.3 billion. Washington, 2 billion. New York, only 7.5 billion. I'm surprised. I thought it would be up there with California. New Hampshire, 87 million. Maine, 42.4 million. Vermont, 44.5 million. Do you think that this is right? No. Do you think I'm a racist for pointing this out? So, look, you want to believe Trump is making America great again? Americans are back at work and things are just just rosy, go ahead, believe it. But you are so not about the truth. And you like to believe the lies that mainstream media, the Trump administration, and Trump are telling you. So you're no different from those who you are calling the sleeping sheeple, the willfully ignorant. There's no difference. You may have some knowledge about what is happening to us collectively. You may be able to, you know, accept some reality. But unfortunately, you're not at the point of fully embracing truth. You still want to be just as comfortable as all of the willfully ignorant want to be. So the truth about employment numbers, nearly one, <laughs> nearly 102 million working aged Americans do not have a job right now. They don't factor in anymore. They're, they're the Americans who are 
marginalized, irrelevant, ignored, don't matter. This country is really only for the comfortable. Those who are thrown out of that comfortable bubble, well, you get to see how meaningless you are. U.S. unemployment rate has fallen to 3.8 percent. Okay, we had massive unemployment and many Trump supporters know that. Right on up until Obama walked out of the White House. Are you going to tell me that Trump in a year and a half just unbelievably, unbelievably got Americans back to work in one and a half years to pull down those unemployment numbers to 3.8 percent? Really? You're going to just believe that? The lowest unemployment we've had in 50 years well, these are not honest numbers. So, uh, let's see. You have to factor in the other category of working-aged Americans that are not currently employed. They are not considered to be officially unemployed because they are considered to be not in the labor force. 95,915,000 working-aged Americans not in the labor for force as of May this year. It's an all-time record high, but they just, well, ignore that. And it makes the federal government, the employment numbers, look really good. But add to that those who are counted as unemployed, which are 6,065,000, add that to the 95,950,000 and you get 102 million. Okay, more working aged Americans without a job right now than there was at any point during the last recession. So Michael Schneider says, don't try to convince me that the US economy is doing well. And he says, until we can get the number of working-aged Americans without a job under 100 million. So if we're at 99 million, Michael, well, you think the economy is doing well. Uh, sorry. No. Do you realize that we only have, well, according to the census, Bureau, we have what, 324 million, 102 don't have jobs. You get that? A third of our population. The real economic number is 21.5% unemployment, 10% inflation, and negative economic growth. The rosy economic picture that the mainstream media is constantly painting, painting for all of us is completely absurd. Use honest numbers. Okay, so he does the unemployment. Um, even the New York Times. Interesting that the New York Times touts how splendid and excellent the economy is doing. And, well, the New York Times that liberal rag of paper, don't you think that they would be trying to paint a bad picture, like Trump is doing uh, really bad and Americans aren't working and the economy is not splendid and excellent? So why is the New York Times supporting the fictitious numbers that come out of our federal government and essentially saying, hey, Trump, you are doing a really good job? Because they're all in the same game. And Americans, you know, you get socially engineered all the time. So, with all of those who are comfortable, 
They believe in that the economy is doing splendid and excellent. Those who aren't working, they're just lazy. It makes that belief really easy for them. The New York Times actually ran an article, the title, We Ran Out of Words to Describe How Good the Job Numbers Are. What are the jobs? What kind of jobs? Service sector jobs. Okay, so the truth. Honest numbers would bring unemployment to 21.5%. And this is, I'm not going to read all of the uh, uh, economists, their names and everything, but how how do we explain this? The government has simply been moving people from the officially unemployed category to the not in the labor force category. Um, we are being conned. Michael Schneider has a friend who has been out of work for two years. He is a software engineer, can't find work. Why can't he find a decent job if this economy is doing so fabulously? Inflation. The way inflation has been calculated in this country has been repeatedly changed over the decades. Inflation has now continued to rise while wages are stagnant. That is why Americans, the middle class being destroyed, but U.S. statistical agencies overestimate the GDP data by underestimating the inflation deflator they use in the calculation. Manipulation of the inflation rate, it enables the U.S. government to pay out pensioners less than they were promised by fudging cost of living adjustments. If inflation was still calculated the way it was calculated in 1990, the rate would be 6% today instead of 3% that they claim. If it was calculated the way they calculated it in the 1980s, it would be 10% today. The prices for housing, food, health care have soared and wages have remained stagnant. And many who have lost the good jobs are now having to work two or three jobs service sector jobs. Okay. Um, middle class systematically still being destroyed. 78 million Americans are participating in the gig economy because full-time jobs don't pay enough to make ends meet. 66 percent of all jobs pay less than twenty dollars an hour. Earnings for low-skilled jobs have stayed very flat for 40 years. Average young adult with student loan debt has a negative net worth. Um, I'm just going to read a couple of them. Poverty rates in the U.S. suburbs have increased by 50% since 1990. 51 million U.S. households can't afford basic basics like rent and food. And Four out of ten Americans do not have enough money to cover an unexpected $400 expense without borrowing money or selling something. 22% of all Americans can't pay all of their bills in a typical month. And poverty is growing really fast. Where? In the suburbs. Middle class. U.S. inflation accelerates to six-year high eroding wages more evidence that housing affordability is getting worse. Half of Americans aren't taking a summer vacation this year. $28,166 is what it costs to provide health care for an American family of four for one year. 39% hang on. Ah. That's not a bad muffler. That's a muffler that I guess some guy thought it would sound great. <sighs> Whatever they do to it. But 39% of Americans have enough savings to cover a $1,000 emergency. America is unprepared for the coming jobs apocalypse. 
Already we are seeing retail stores close down all over. And yes, they are still closing down all over during the Trump years. Many mom and pop stores, they just can't make it anymore because of the rules and regulations and the taxes. And so they close up shop and all of it is deliberate because they want monopolies. The big box chain stores and restaurants and the fast food crap restaurants. That's what they are leaving us. New age of automation. Automation could destroy as many 73 million U.S. low-skilled, low-wage laborers by 2030. It's 2018, that's 12 years. Already we see robots taking over jobs. And America is pretty much a low-skilled, low-wage labor country with a pocket of the high-skilled in Silicon Valley. So this is coming. More and more Americans will be out of jobs due to automation, and yet somehow the federal government can still collect record taxes, individual taxes. You know, I see this headline what, every quarter? Feds collect record in individual income taxes. Record. Then the next quarter. Record. Then the next quarter. Record. Well, I don't even know if that's true. Because <laughs> individuals are really, really... Maybe it is true. Because Americans now know they live in a police state. They now know that if they don't pay up, they could be thrown in jail. They could be thoroughly destroyed. But the federal government collected a record, one trillion, one hundred and forty three million, one hundred and forty one thousand in the first eight months of fiscal twenty eighteen. Two quarters. But interesting, Corpor corporation income tax collections declined. Americans, you individuals, you are getting so unbelievably screwed over left and right. You pay higher taxes, and you get nothing for it, and you pay those taxes, and illegal immigrants get an awful lot from it, are you tired now? But what needs to happen is, forget about the willfully ignorant choosing to be willfully ignorant. Clearly, they have made a choice to remain children. Okay, but those who are quote-unquote awake, misnomer, it's an awakening process, clearly that is the case when you have an awful lot of people with an awful lot of knowledge about all of us being destroyed and at the same time they support Trump well you need to do work on yourself you need to clear up this confirmation bias you need to I'm sorry uh, step out of your comfort zone and really take a look at what is happening here in our country. We are still being destroyed. The middle class is still being destroyed. You are still being ripped off. The geoengineering is still being sprayed with an awful lot of poisons. 5G, Trump, national security policy, get that 5G cell structure up and running. So, all links are below.